Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. In this video I'm going to go through how and why to create concept maps to help you with your revision. So if you are new here then just click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So the why should you use concept maps is linked to how your brain works. Our brains have an incredible ability to store information but our brains are really not very good at locating that information and that's what we mean by poor retrieval strength. Now our brains can store so much information because there are about 86 billion neurons in our brain and each of those neurons is connected to another one via a synapse and when those all connect together we get these neural pathways and that is what creates these memories, these connections between all of these neurons which is storing information. So if we link that to concept maps and revision techniques Ideally, you should be doing at least five different techniques before every test and that's because it will test a range of different skills and it will help to connect lots of different pathways. So when you first learn the information, you just have lots of disconnected facts in your brain that you're told in the lesson and that's unconnected information. So you then, after a lesson, need to be doing revision and consolidation activities that links together all of that information to make knowledge and long-term memories from those unconnected facts. And the best revision techniques to do that, I have a video on, um, and I'll link that up here. But in summary, it's flashcards, blurting, graphic organizers. Now that is what the concept maps fall under, which we're gonna go through text to image and practice questions. So let's get to the concept maps then. Concept maps are just a visual way to represent your notes. So it's organizing information, but the key thing is the way it's organized, there are links. So it's not just like a spider diagram where you just have everything you know coming out of the topic heading. Every arrow is representing some kind of link. And we've got an example here. DNA fragments must be isolated for recombinant technologies. That links to then how we get those DNA fragments. Um, and that could be in vivo cloning or in vitro with PCR. And then we've got some more examples as well. So why we should use them then? They're much more sophisticated than simple mind maps and spider diagrams. And that is because you actively have to think about all the connections and categories of the information. And that will help with the long term memory, but also it will make you better understand the content. The final reason, which is so important if you're aiming for those top grades at GCSE or A level, is having all of these links helps you to holistically understand the topic. And you'll therefore be better at applying this knowledge to unknown examples in the challenging application questions. So how do we make one then? The way that we do it, I'm going to split into these four steps and then I'm going to walk you through one that I have made. You need to pick a topic first of all and depending on how big you're making this concept map, if it's going to be a small one you might just want to have a tiny topic, if it's going to be a really big one it might be one whole unit. So the first thing is identify all of the key concepts and key terms within that topic. Step is categorize the concepts and that could be according to whether they're processes, definitions, reactions, bonds and we'll have a look at that in the example that I'm going to go through. Then we need to organize the concepts to show these links and relationships which is the key idea of concept maps. Lastly we can use different colors, shapes or maybe a combination of the two just to reinforce this idea of categories and to help you be able to remember all of these different facts. So I'm gonna do one for carbohydrates. It's only a small topic, but I've only got a tiny bit of space here to do it in. And the first thing I did was write out all of some of the key concepts I could think of to do with carbohydrates. Now I haven't done everything to do with carbohydrates here for A-level um, because I've only fit it into this space, um, but you'll get an idea. So I've gone through all of the keywords I could remember linked to the main ideas with carbohydrates, and that's step one. Then I categorize these concepts. So I've said here, these are the key types of carbohydrates. We've got monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. 
the bonds that we learnt within them, so glycosidic bonds and hydrogen bonds. Then I've got a list of all of the carbohydrate examples that you learn at A level for AQA. And then the last category I had was the different biochemical tests that we learned for the carbohydrates. So I haven't got every single bit of detail because, for example, the polysaccharides, I haven't gone into the idea of function and fibrils. Uh, we haven't got the diagram of alpha and beta glucose, but you get the idea. Then I'm going to categorize and link these topics. So we're going to be showing the links and the relationships now. So I've now shuffled them all around and I've put the key types of carbohydrates at the top and I've then put my examples under the correct subheading. I've then linked to show that the Benedict's test, so that is for the reducing sugars and that is the five that I've highlighted and the non-reducing sugar is sucrose. I've then shown that these six examples all have glycosidic bonds and hydrogen bonds are in cellulose and starch. And lastly, I've got the test for starch is the iodine test. Now that's looking at my links and relationships between the categories, but it's still quite messy and hard to understand, which is why the final step of using colors and shapes is a really useful visual tool to help with your clarity of all of those groups. So this is my final step of this mini concept map. I've given the types um, a different color and a slightly different shape box. I've then got my examples in the yellow box. All of the tests are in a white rectangle and the bonds are in these oval beige shapes. So you could have a key on the side for this as well. So that is a very, very basic and very quick concept map but you could expand this if you had more space to actually write along these lines what the links are or incorporate even more information as well. You might want to add diagrams to make it more visual also. So we could have had the diagrams of alpha and beta glucose. But the main thing is following those steps. What are the key terms? Categorize them, the links and the relationships, and then enhance the visual aspect to make it easier to process and remember by having these categorized shapes and colors. So there we go for concept maps. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, give it a thumbs up.